So welcome back to another video. Today we're going to show you how to make pepperoni pizza. I'm just going to have olives too. I'm going to get the olives out of the thing. There we go. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, so uh, we're going to go over what we're going to need and, and stuff and like the, the tools you're going to need and the ingredients and all that. So, first things first, sizzles. This is some chorizos, some mozzarella cheese, some of this tomato puree, olives, salt, I think we did yeast already but um, maybe not, yeast, oil, flour, the tools you're going to need are one spoon of wood, one bowl of mixing, and one scales of weight. And also you're going to need oven gloves and you're going to need one of these trays. So, let me just get... Ow, 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 come on, out. Right. I was making a piece in the, the oven out of Right, so, first things first. This one's already kind of empty, so we're going to start with this. So what we're going to do is we're going to put 300 Gs of flour in here. Pour it in. This one is done. Um, it should be noted that this one, uh, this one, this recipe is also the same process used for making bread, but it changes halfway through. So the bread video will be its own thing. That will, the these will both have the same start, is what I mean, because this is way too much pizza to make for myself. So when this kind of heaps up, this one's kind of small, so I'll show you this. When it heaps up like this, you can just lift it off and shake it down like that, it'll flatten it and make it easier to add more. So, we're currently there. That means we need to add more. So, let's pile it on there, there we go. It's a bit more than 300, it's closer to 400, but, you know, it's chill, actually wait, no, it's, oh, I was, I'm a dumbass, it's 500 grams of bloody flour. There we go. It's closer to 600 now, but... So that's 300 mLs of water. Oh God, I'm so stupid. Right, sorry about that, guys. Right, we're then going to take this off and put it at the side here. Just fling this back in the cupboard. And there, there we go. This one is here. And then... This goes in there like that, thusly. Now at this point, you're going to run the tap on hot. This tap gets really hot, you can, um, so that's why I use a tap. You can use the kettle as well, because the hotter the water, the better, the more it's going to rise. So, at this point, we're going to add, let's put this up here, and we're going to add. This is, you just kind of eyeball it, right? Or you'll do it, like, I'll use the good method, actually. So, wooden spoon, use the end. Drive the wooden spoon in, and rotate. Make it like three, like, you know, a bowling pin. Like this off. Then, on there you're going to fill each well with the three core ingredients of bread. So oil, into there. I'm going to put some salt. doesn't fill it right the way up, but um, hardly any actually, but uh, that's enough salt. Just, just a pinch of salt, a couple of pinches will be fine. Right. This one here is going to put the yeast, so we're going to open our packet of yeast, if I can find where the system as does only make yeast. Actually, on the side note, this is where the sizzles come in. Well, actually, the sizzles come in later, but I'm going to use the sizzles now. Um, so then, get it like that. There we go. You should only use one sachet of yeast. And this can just go back in the cupboard. Into the cupboard of many baking. Right. So we're gonna cut that, fold thusly, to form it into a kind of shape like this. So funnel it into the final one. Now, cover it like this. Okay. And this is ready for the bin. Now at this point, you're supposed to use 300 millilitres of, this water's really hot, right? So I'll show you a method to do that. 
You have to bring the scales back out, actually. So, a method for doing it is like this. You get this? Now, if you don't know, grams and milliliters are the same thing. Like, one liter is one kilogram, one ml is one g. So, just get this to 300 g's of water onto here and we'll solve it. So, a bit more doesn't matter, really. So, we're going to look, 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 and there we go. Right there. Now we have that. All fed air. You might need a bit more. I always find that I actually always need a bit more water, but I try to measure it accurately anyway. So, there we go. Now, when making this, it's important that the salt and the, um... I've got much of yellow cheese and, and olives for pizza. Right. The, it's important that you don't allow the salt and the yeast to touch. It's okay when they touch them when you mix it, but they can't touch beforehand because that'll kill the yeast. You put salt in as a preservative. You cannot bother with the salt, it'll turn out the same, it'll just taste a bit weird. Right, so you're going to stir it like this, and just keep stirring and st stirring, stirring. That's the pebbles of having a Scottish accent, I guess. Something come out as sounding like a W, even though you don't intend them to. Like stirring. And try to say three, like the letter. Always comes out as three. Like one, two, three. It could just sound like a dumbass. So, I'm going to mix this. Like that. You're just going to need to mix it for a good amount. Some people do this with their hands. I don't like doing that. I'm not savage. The hands come later. Right. Um, okay, so then we just mix that around. This is important. The sticky stuff, to kind of rotate that to the bottom. And then, um, because reasons. Right. So. Just keep, keep going. Because you want to get all the stuff from the bottom. Also, if your arms are kind of weak, this can be annoying with a wooden spoon. I'm doing like some feeling now because I was in the gym earlier having a workout sesh and I was lifting quite a bit of weight and then my arm is just deep. Right. Just keep stirring. Just keep stirring, stirring, stirring. Right. We're the forgetful fish, so I guess you'll remember to keep stirring. Right. There we go. It's about this point when it's sucked up all the the um, stuff in the bottom. You just kind of wipe it with your finger like this. And you get the rest. You don't have to. This isn't essential, but I do it because I'll get the most utility out of my flour. Right then, there we go. Now this has to rise, so you're going to leave it for about an hour and 30 minutes. So it's good to peel this dish in advance. It's not a... really ain't a quick one. So, um... First, just going to wipe your finger. That's what she said. So... Water kind of basically neutralises this stuff and makes it easy to do. We'll clean this stuff later. Turn that off. Okay. Now you can either wrap it with um, some wrapping stuff, or you can just chuck a towel over the top. Because you don't want you want this to not be directly exposed to air, or it'll crust over the top. So just cover it like that, and put it in. Just I'll put it in this corner here, like that, and leave that there. For about an hour and a half. You'll see later. You guys will all see when it, um, what I'm talking about just till it gets till, till it rises till it kind of gets to it here. So we'll catch up in the next part. So we're back. This bad boy. Right. It has got quite fat. Like that. I could get a bit fatter, but I'm quite kind of hungry, so um. I'm just going to leave it at that. So at this point you're going to get your this thing. Right. And this is going to be bread as well, so we'll get to that 
just in a minute. We're just going to need this. Right then. So, I'm going to get this. And just want to put this big cold some flour. This is all just flour that's on here anyway, so it's not a huge deal, it's a wee bit dirty. Some flour like that, put some flour on the top of this here. And then flub it around like that. Oil. Oil in your hands, or actually put some oil in this thing first because you need oil to neutralise the uh, effect of the stickiness. Right, let's mix it around in here. And by this point it will be on your fingers anyway, so <laughs> fingers. Right, so. And then, as it's already on your fingers, use the oily hand to scrape away all of this from the side, like that. And as you can see, very little is stuck to my hand. Then just going to get it and firmly knead it, like this. Just imagine it's somebody you really hate and want to strangle or something. Or you could not do that, I don't really care. Do 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 So just gonna keep doing it until it basically till the best you can suck up all the flour off the thing off your chopping board here. So like this. Doing get as much of it sucked up as possible. Okay, and then you can have, well, I'll do it like this. Then roll it into like a hot dog thing. Okay, and then in the middle. Wow. Now you know where it is. Now you know the center line. Just kind of constrict it thusly. Right then. So, now you have two. Now at this point, you've used up all your flour, so you need to add up a little bit more. All right. Around there, some flour in that one, and some flour in that one. So, this one is going to be bread. So, I need it, 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 need it. It's just going to be a clean loaf. Okay, that's just like that. Put that in there. It's not going to be a big loaf, so. Um, I'm just a single guy all by myself. Don't need a huge loaf of bread. Right, so, there we go, put that over there, and leave that for one hour. Then we get this one here. So we're going to just squish it there, actually, we're going to do this step first. Let me squish it there with this. Right. Some flour in here. This will prevent it from sticking to this thing. Stuff it like that, and you're going to preheat the oven right, to 180 degrees. So, about there. And mine doesn't have the most accurate of um, systems. I think that is still the problem this way. So, I'm just going to keep pounding this down. I don't know how you can. Do this with a rolling pen, I don't have one, so... The hand will have to suffice. You can talk to it and such. Okay. Now... On there, like that. So now we get the all important other things. You quickly wash your hands. So I'll be two minutes, or less than that. I'll be like some amount of seconds. Okay, hands washed. Now, squashed all that um, stuff. I'm gonna leave this for the now and let it all get crusty and then it will just all peel off and it makes it so much easier to clean. 
So, now you get your toppings. Um, olives, olives, that's what I want. Right. First, tomato puree. It's just going to go on like this. There we go. Like that. Now, that should be enough. I'm just going to eyeball it, right? You can maybe want more or less. I prefer just a medium amount. Right. I'm just going to get a spoon. Rub it all in, like that. And that's what she said. So, um, like that. There we go, and put the spoon here. We'll come back to it in a minute. Then, now, here's some important advice. You put the salami first, because then the cheese will melt on top of the salami, sealing it in. If you put it on the top, it'll slide all over the place, and it's quite... Uh, so this isn't even salami, this is chewies, but you, you know what I mean, the pepperoni stuff, the meat that you're putting on the top of your meat, meat festival of pizza. So I like to put a lot, so I put them kind of slightly overlapping. Like that. There we go. Some of that there, put that over there, some of that. Oh yeah, things like that. Like that. Now a little bit, then just get this and just wipe it like that, just to minimise wastage. And you've got some left over to eat it or save it for later. Now we've got the cheese. So. I'm going to just put it in half because I'm quite anal you know, about this kind of stuff. I'll use one more bit of cheese just to kind of fill in the gaps that have formed. There we go, and just a little bit of cheese here, some cheese on there. I'm just going to eat the rest of this cheese, so. Delicious. Now for the olives, then pluck them out, crush in your hand, there you go. But you can put them on whole, I just like them flat because it stops them rolling around. And with the olives you can put as many as you want. I like just a light spattering of olives. So there we go. That is a sufficient amount of olives. I didn't put any more. Now we get the pizza. That is being produced here. Open our oven. Put it in. Close and you want to leave that for about 15 minutes. Okay, until it's the cheese is melted, it's got a kind of a crispy, golden brown colour amongst the cheese. So we'll give that that amount of time, and we'll come back when it's ready. Okay, so we're back. The pizza is ready. Let me just turn on the light. There we go, the big blast of heat has just came out of the oven. Right. As you can see, a golden crispy colour in the cheese. This is where your glove of ovens comes in. There we go. Lovely. Delicious. Excellente. Although, there's one of the issues. I was in the shop and the chorizo was a quid or the pepperoni was like 3 quid 50 because it was in bloody m &S. It kind of creates this, a lot of greasy stuff comes off of it. So there. That is a pizza completed and ready to eat. Now this is a two-parter, so the pizza is just the first part. This bread will be coming up soon. Just wait and see. So in the next part, 
we'll be finishing this bread. So I'll see you guys in about 45 minutes when this is ready to go in the oven. Okay, so welcome back. Right, that's about as resin as that's going to get because it's just a little Klein loaf. So we're going to put the oven on. Viewers may function differently. 200 C's, so about there. And we're going to get this. I ate all that pizza earlier, it was fantastic. Right. There we go. And we're going to leave that in there for 30 minutes. So we will return in 30 minutes and see the end result. It should rise quite a bit. We're back. This has been in here for 25 minutes. So, it's a bit smaller. Between 23 and 32 minutes, depending on the size of your loaf. As you can see, it's risen not a huge amount, because it's just a little loaf, but it has risen enough. So you take that out and put it up here. Now the fun part. Now, that in there, and flip this out. There we go, one bread completed. Turn off your oven, fill less of water if you want. Okay, so that's how you make bread and pizza. So, what do we learn today? Let's do a quick summarization. How to make bread, how to make pizza, what ingredients to use for those things, what utensils to use and how long to put them in the oven. That's what we learned today, or you guys are now in the order. So, have fun making that yourself and make a good comment or something. So, um, live along and don't die. <laughs>